Hi everyone, it's Tom here. If you've been on the edge of your seat waiting for Volkswagen to add yet another SUV to its lineup, well, that wait is finally over because the all new Tygo has been revealed and it's coming to the UK very soon. But how does this car compare to VW's other models and who exactly does it appeal to? In this video, we'll be exploring the Tygo in detail, taking a look at the sporty design, the four different trim levels on offer, plus the equipment they provide, and the different engine options. So is this a car you can see yourself driving then? Let's find out. The all new Volkswagen Tygo is an SUV coupe that will be positioned as the European market's entry level crossover when it goes on sale in the UK later this year. It slots between the T-Cross and T-Rock in the brand's lineup and will rival other practical small SUVs like the Ford Puma, Nissan Juke and Renault Capture. If the Tygo looks somewhat familiar, that's because it's essentially the Volkswagen Nivus, a South American market model that launched in Brazil and Argentina in 2020. For Europe, the car has been given a new name, a few styling tweaks and a new trim level. More on that later. The Tygo is based on VW Group's MQB A0 platform, the same one that underpins the Polo and T-Cross, and it will be manufactured at the company's Navara plant in Pamplona, Spain, where those vehicles are also built. In terms of design then, the Tygo adopts a sportier, fastback style look that sets it apart from its siblings and I think it works really well. Highlights include the new front end with the standard fit LED headlights and a deep front bumper that accentuates the car's sportiness, the sleek roof line that slopes down into a spoiler at the rear, the wheel arch trim complementing the car's body colour and the full width light bar running across the back. You can also choose between 16 or 18 inch alloy wheels depending on the trim you opt for. Overall, it's a nicely designed crossover and quite possibly the trendiest small SUV in its lineup. So how much space will the Tygo take up on your drive? Well, taking a look at the dimensions, it's slightly longer and wider than the T-Cross at 4,266mm and 1,757mm respectively. This means it's around the same size as the popular Nissan Juke. The wheelbase, the distance between the front and rear axles is 2,566mm millimeters, almost exactly that of the Polo and T-Cross. The Tygo's extended rear overhang helps to accommodate 438 litres of boot space, 16 litres more than the Duke, giving the car a strong sense of practicality. Let's explore the powertrains on offer and sadly there's not much to get excited about here. Since it's based on the same platform as the Polo and T-Cross, it shares many of the same engines, so sadly there's no hybrid or fully electric version to speak of. What we have here then are just two petrol options, starting with the entry-level 1.0-litre turbocharged 3-cylinder petrol, which will make up the bulk of the lineup. You can configure this engine with 94 brake horsepower and a 5-speed manual gearbox as standard, or 108 brake horsepower with a 6-speed manual gearbox. If you prefer automatic, 7-speed auto is an option with this variant. The most powerful engine is the 1.5-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder petrol unit, producing 148 brake horsepower. All variants send power to the front wheels. Zero to 62 miles per hour times have yet to be confirmed, but we do know that top speeds will be 113 miles per hour, 118 miles per hour, and 131 miles per hour respectively. There are currently no plans for a GTI or R performance model, but VW have confirmed that mild hybrid technology could be implemented if there's enough customer demand. Need help finding your perfect next vehicle? Book a free consultation with OSV's vehicle specialists on 01903 538 835 or click the pop-out banner above. It's time for a rundown of the four different trim levels on offer. It hasn't been confirmed yet if all of these will make up part of the UK lineup, but we do know that the higher spec R-Line and style trims definitely will be. Let's start with the entry level car, which comes with a great array of standard equipment, but it's worth noting that full specifications have yet to be confirmed. Outside, there's LED headlights and colour-coded heated electric door mirrors. Inside the cabin, which bears a strong resemblance to that of the recently updated Polo, you get a 6.5-inch infotainment touchscreen with radio and smartphone connectivity, a digital instrument display for driving information, and a multifunction steering wheel. A few safety features come as standard, including front assist with autonomous emergency braking and lane keep assist, both ideal for motorway driving. The next trim up the ladder is life, which will likely strike the right balance between equipment and affordability. 
This variant offers features like puddle lights, helpful for nighttime parking, the option of a panoramic roof, different cabin upholstery, and an extra USB-C charging port. From there, rather than having a top of the range model, the lineup diverges with two distinct trims, Style and R-Line. Style focuses more on the car's visual elegance, with features including IQ light LED matrix headlights, which VW claims makes nighttime driving safer and more comfortable, front and rear parking sensors, and more dynamic rear bumpers. A 10.5 inch driver display comes as standard and the infotainment touchscreen is upgraded to a larger 8 inch screen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you want the sportiest trim then definitely go for the Europe only R-Line variant. This features R-Line interior and exterior body kit with 17 inch Valencia alloy wheels, gloss black inserts, black roof rails and ambient lighting inside the cabin. Optional extras include a 9.2 inch infotainment touchscreen that can be configured with the style and R-Line trims and the IQ Drive Travel Assist semi-autonomous adaptive cruise control. This allows the car to keep a safe distance from the vehicle ahead on motorways by controlling its braking, steering and acceleration at speeds up to 130 miles per hour. So I think this is shaping up to be a really exciting, stylish and practical small SUV. It's due to go on sale towards the end of the year and first deliveries are expected in early 2022. In terms of pricing, expect the Tygo to set you back around 23 to 25,000 pounds depending on the variant. This is just speculation as full UK pricing has yet to be confirmed, but as we approach the vehicle's launch date, we'll pin a comment down below with any updates. So guys, let me know what you make of the new Volkswagen Tygo. Do you think it fits nicely in Volkswagen's SUV lineup? Or is it rather pointless? Let us know your thoughts down below in the comments. On the hunt for your next vehicle, but struggling to find one that ticks every single box. At OSV, we offer a unique consultative approach that ensures we understand your vehicle needs to get you behind the wheel of the perfect maker model. Chat with one of our specialists today on 01903 538 835 or click the link in the description below to book a consultation. If you enjoyed today's video make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more motoring content and once you're subscribed don't forget to ring that notification bell above to be informed when a new video goes live. And that's all for today guys, many thanks for watching this episode, take care and safe driving.